what is compton scattering this phenomenon was uh, discovered by arthur compton in 1923 compton experimentally discovered this phenomenon and also he gave theoretical explanation also okay so what is this phenomenon when a beam of x rays are scattered from a target the scattered rays consists of longer wavelengths in addition to the original wavelength so the scattered uh, radiations contain longer uh, original wavelength as well as longer wavelength and uh, the shift in wavelength the wavelength shift depends only on the scattering angle so this was the phenomenon uh, <clears throat> mainly uh, this this is observed in the case of x rays and gamma rays compton uh, did the experiment with x rays uh, he then repeated with gamma rays also so when these rays are scattered from a target uh, there is a an increase in wavelength okay so let us consider the details consider the experimental arrangement of uh, compton scattering uh, this is an x-ray tube uh, the radi uh, radiations monochromatic radiations from the x-ray tube um, are allowed to pass through a collimator so that uh, we get a narrow beam and then this is scattered from a graphite target okay this x-ray will be scattered in different directions uh, then he let us say in this particular diagram uh, x-ray scattered along so the incident uh, x-ray has a wavelength lambda scattered x-ray has a longer wavelength let us say lambda prime here the x-ray in this particular diagram the x-ray is scattered along 90 degree with respect to the incident direction okay scattering angle phi is 90 degree this is uh, mm, measured uh, its wavelength is measured how is it measured again another collimator so that we get a narrow beam and then using an x-ray spectrometer in, in the discussion on x-rays in previous class uh, we have seen the structure of an x-ray spectrometer the same arrangement here you have a rotating crystal uh, the only thing is that we are not measuring the wavelength of x-rays directly from the x-ray x-ray uh, tube but after scattering by the graphite okay so this x-ray is uh, given to uh, is allowed to incident on a crystal with a non interplanar distance and uh, using Bragg's law we can calculate the wavelength okay so the wavelength of uh, x-ray beam can be measured using an x-ray detector so in this way, uh, in, in, in the actual experiment, Compton used an X-ray beam of wavelength 0 0.0708 nanometer and graphite target. Okay, and the wavelength lambda prime of scattered X-rays were measured at uh, 45 degree, 90 degree and 135 degree in three different uh, angles. And these are the experimental results obtained by Compton. Um, the shift in wavelength of the scattered X-rays were as shown in the figure. The first, you can see two peaks in this figure. So here, the first panel, the topmost panel, corresponds to no shift. I mean, uh, no scattering, zero degree. That means uh, there is uh, those X-rays uh, passing through the target without any scattering. Uh, then 45 degree scattering, 90 degree scattering, 135 degree scattering. Now, starting with uh, this panel, you can see two peaks. Okay, and these peaks are more pronounced at 90 degree and 135 degree. Here, the first peak, okay, it corresponds to um, the incident ray of uh, 0 0.0708 nanometer. And the second peak here, here and here, it corresponds to the scattered ray. Okay, he, this is the wavelength of the second peak. At 45 degree, you have 0 0.0715 nanometer. At 90 degree, 0 0.0731 nanometer. Then at 135 degree 0.0749 nanometer. So we can see that with the scattering angle, there is a uh, gradual increase in the uh, wavelength of the scattered X-ray. So there is a shift. Now what is the exact relation between uh, the shift and the scattering angle? This is the question. So we have got a relationship between the shift and the scattering angle. Now how um, we can theoretically explain it? How we can explain this phenomenon? Okay. What is before we go to the details of um, uh, the theoretical explanation of Compton scattering, let us uh, pause here and ask the question what is unusual about Compton scattering from the point of view of classical electromagnetic theory? Let us see. According to classical electromagnetic theory, uh, the incident radiation of frequency nu should accelerate an electron in the target atom in the direction of propagation of the incident radiation. 
because the incident radiation consists of electric field and magnetic field and this electric field uh, oscillating electric field in the electromagnetic wave should accelerate the charged particle which is electron in the target atom okay in in the uh, in the direction of propagation of the incident radiation this is according to the classical electromagnetic theory and it should cause forced oscillations of the electron these forced oscillations result in re radiation at frequency nu prime less than or equal to nu so this electron uh, can undergo forced oscillations by the oscillating electromagnetic field in the um, particularly oscillating electric field in the in the incident radiation and uh, these forced uh, when, when a charged particle is undergoing oscillation it will re emit re radiate frequency this frequency can be equal to or less than incident frequency the frequency nu prime or wavelength lambda prime of the scattered radiation should depend on the intensity of the incident radiation and on the exposure time this is the crucial point uh, so we can see that according to even according to classical electromagnetic theory the scattered frequency can be less than or equal to the incident frequency so that part is fine that means scattered wavelength can be greater than the incident wavelength but the important point is that this frequency or wavelength of the scattered radiation should depend on the intensity of the incident radiation as well as on the exposure time how much uh, time we are exposing the target by the incident radiation now what uh, what is the experimental finding compton's experimental results showed that lambda prime is independent of the intensity and exposure time okay uh, both it is uh, the, the the wavelength of the scattered radiation lambda prime is independent of the intensity of the incident radiation as well as the exposure time of the incident radiation so in this way compton scattering crucially um, differs from what is expected by classical electromagnetic theory so this is an unusual situation why it is so uh, there was no explanation according to classical electromagnetic theory so here is another phenomenon which uh, um, contradicts the predictions of classical electromagnetic theory let us derive the wavelength shift obtained in compton scattering um, <clears throat> so in compton scattering what happens is an incident radiation collides with a free electron okay so uh, here we have to keep in mind that uh, the incident radiation uh, collides with an electron in a metal but uh, we will later see that most of the time uh, Compton scattering happens in the X-ray region. So an X-ray photon has uh, an energy of the order of a few kilo electron volt. And uh, this electron which is inside the metal atom, its binding energy with the metal atom will be of the order of a few electron volt in the case of a valence electron. So um, only a very very small amount of the incident photon energy is required to uh, to liberate this electron from the metal atom okay so as far as this incident photon is concerned this electron is almost free so we will look at uh, Compton scattering as the collision between an incident photon and a free electron okay so an incident photon comes and collides with a, an electron at rest this is the incident direction the direction of the incident photon and this photon is scattered with an angle let us say phi with respect to the incident direction and the electron is also scattered in another direction making an angle theta with the incident direction okay now <clears throat> the energy of the incident photon suppose its frequency is nu so its energy is h nu and its momentum is um, we know that energy of the photon can also be written as pc Okay, so its momentum is energy by C, energy is H nu, so momentum is H nu by C. Right, this we have discussed already. And uh, the scattered photon has a lower frequency, hence its energy is, let us say, H nu prime, but nu prime is less than nu. So what is the momentum of the scattered photon? Energy by C, or H nu prime by C. And uh, this electron is at rest. So its uh, only energy is um, rest energy, mc square. Here m is the rest mass of the electron, so mc square is the rest energy. 
the scattered photon has a moment a scattered electron has a momentum let us say p therefore its energy is um, square root of pc whole square plus mc square the whole square the relativistic expression for total energy of a material particle so this is the <coughs> um, picture of uh, compton scattering now based on this uh, um, picture let us try to derive uh, the expression for the change in wavelength of this um, scattered photon with respect to the incident photon so in order to derive this first uh, i will consider uh, conservation of momentum conservation of momentum let us say our uh, directions are like this this is the x direction this is the y direction so since the uh, linear momentum is a um, vector quantity we have to consider its conservation both along the along both directions okay since the scattering takes place in a plane we have to consider uh, the conservation of momentum along the x axis as well as along the y y axis okay <coughs> so um so first we will consider the conservation of momentum along the x axis what is the momentum before collision uh, momentum of the photon is um, this is along the x direction so we have h nu by c electron is at rest so there is no momentum okay now after collision um the photon is scattered in this direction electron is scattered in this direction both have momentum so we have to take the component along the x direction so let us uh, uh, resolve this momentum components this is the incident direction okay uh, this is the direction in which the photon is scattered uh, its uh, momentum is h nu prime by c and this angle is phi so we have to resolve this momentum uh, along x axis and y axis so its x component is h nu prime by c uh, the component along the uh, angle phi it is h nu prime by c cos phi and the y component vertical component will be h nu prime by c sin phi right and what about the electron electron is scattered with a momentum p along an, an angle theta with the incident direction so if you take its component its component along the x direction will be p cos phi and component along the vertical direction or y direction will be uh, this is theta right okay this is p cos theta and this is p sin theta okay so uh, this is photon momentum after uh, scattering Uh, so its x component is uh, cosine component h nu prime by c cos phi uh, y component is h nu prime by c sin phi okay and uh, for electron scattered electron having a momentum p the x component is p cos theta y component is p sin theta okay so let us come to the conservation of momentum along the x axis so this is uh, momentum before uh, photon has a momentum before collision photon has a momentum along the x direction electron has no momentum now after collision both photon and electron has momentum along the x direction so uh, what are they uh, both are along the plus x direction so both are positive so h nu prime by c cos phi for photon and p cos theta both are in the same direction so we can add them so p cos theta for electron right we can uh, simplify this we can multiply throughout with uh, c and uh, keep p cos theta then this will become p c cos theta let us keep p c cos theta on one side and take this to the other side so what you get is p c cos theta is equal to you can take this to the left side we have h nu minus h nu prime cos phi let us call it equation 1 now along the y axis what is the momentum along the y axis before collision uh, the photon is traveling along the x axis before collision so there is no momentum 
along the um, y axis for photon electron is at rest so it has no momentum along any axis so there is zero momentum along the y direction before collision but after collision photon has a component uh, momentum uh, momentum component along the y direction along the plus y direction electron scattered electron has a momentum component along the minus y direction so this is plus y direction this is minus y direction so one of them we have to take use as positive let us take uh, this direction as positive this direction as negative so this momentum component will be a positive component whereas this momentum component will be having a sign negative okay so after collision we can write h nu prime by c cos phi uh, it is sine phi this is along plus phi direction so let us take it as positive and this is along minus y direction for electron so minus p sin theta again uh, let us multiply the word with c uh, take this p sin p c sin theta to the this side please so we have p c sin theta is equal to h nu prime sin phi okay we can further simplify we can see that if you square and add square this equation and square this equation and add them together this uh, theta can be eliminated okay so um, pc square cos square theta plus pc square sin square theta pc square is common we, we can take it outside cos square theta plus sin square theta will be one okay so theta can be eliminated similarly we have to square and add right hand side also let us do that um, after that we can go to conservation of uh, energy so now we don't need this thing so I will do this uh, calculation here so let us uh, square this and add it so we know um, what you get on the left hand side is pc whole square cos square theta plus pc whole square sin square theta pc whole square will be common cos square theta plus sin square theta is 1 so the left hand side will be pc whole square what about the right hand side square of this term that is h nu minus h nu prime cos phi whole square plus square of this term okay h nu prime square sin square phi Okay, let us uh, slightly simplify this. Uh, if we expand these terms, the first term will be h nu whole square, right? Then uh, this is a square, then there is a minus 2ab term, minus 2a times b times, okay? So we have minus 2 h nu times h nu prime cos phi. This is minus 2ab term. Okay, A is H nu, B is H nu prime cos phi. Then plus another term is H nu prime square cos square phi. Okay, but uh, um, there is another term uh, from, from, from equation 2, H nu prime square sin square phi. So H nu prime square cos square phi plus H nu prime square uh, sin square phi. H nu prime square you can take as common outside. The remaining is cos square phi plus sin square phi which is 1. Okay, so we have an expression Pc whole square is equal to h nu square minus 2 h nu h nu prime cos phi plus h nu prime square. Let us call it equation 3. So this is the result that we obtain when we apply conservation of linear momentum along the x-axis and y-axis and eliminating uh, the angle theta, the, the scattering angle for the electron theta. So what is remaining is, so what we have done is we have expressed uh, the momentum of the scattered electron that is p or pc in terms of uh, the energy of the incident photon energy of the scattered photon and the scattering angle phi for the photon okay this result will be useful later okay uh, so we have done with the conservation of momentum let us supply conservation of energy now So next we will deal with conservation of energy. Okay. 
So the energy of the incident before collision, uh, what are the energy values? Photon has the energy H nu. Electron has only rust energy M c square. After collision, photon has energy lower energy H nu prime. Electron has this much energy that is square root of E c whole square plus M c square the whole square. Okay, <clears throat> we can try to simplify this and before that, let us look at this expression a little more. Um, this is the rest energy of the electron, this is the total energy of the electron after collision. Okay, um, this is the photon energy before collision, this is the photon energy after collision. Suppose we rewrite this expression in such a way that let us bring photon energies together and electron energies together. Then what happens to this equation? I will write it here. Uh, what you get is I am taking uh, this photon energy to the left side and this electron energy to the right side. So, what you get is H nu minus H nu prime is equal to this term. Let me um, simply use uh, total energy of the electron, let us say E. Okay, and this term we are bringing to the right side. Okay, what is the, uh, the term on the right side? Total energy of the electron minus rust energy of the electron. Total energy minus rust energy is nothing but kinetic energy of the electron. Okay, kinetic energy gained by the electron. So this is the right hand side is the kinetic energy gained by the electron. What is the left hand side? Photon energy before collision minus photon energy after collision. So the difference in photon energy is equal to kinetic energy gained by the electron. So this equation shows that um, this scattering is an elastic scattering or this collision between photon and electron is an elastic collision okay there is no uh, internal excite, uh, internal energy given to the electron so the, the idea is that uh, in elastic collision the kinetic energy is always conserved okay uh, if you look at this here uh, initially electron has no kinetic energy but after electron is scattered after collision electron is scattered so it gains some kinetic energy this is the gain in kinetic energy of the electron and this is if we treat photon energy as its kinetic energy this is the loss of kinetic energy of the photon or loss of energy of the photon so loss of photon energy becomes gain in kinetic energy of the electron no energy is used for any excitation or as, uh, as any internal energy this is an elastic uh, collision so, <clears throat> photo, uh, this uh, Compton scattering is an elastic collision between the incident photon and the electron. Okay, that is a, 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 a separate idea. Let us come back here. Um, we are trying, let us try to simplify. So, from here, we can get an expression for Pc square. And again, look at equation 3. We have an expression for Pc square in terms of photon energies and scattering angle phi. Here also we can try such a thing and we can substitute for Pc square from that expression. That is a method that we are going to do. So in order to obtain, the, uh, to obtain an expression for Pc square, Pc square is now in the square root of this term. So we have to mean, we have to square this. In order to get, in order to square this, we have to isolate the square root. Okay, we have to make it alone. So in order to isolate this, we can bring it to the left side. So we have h nu minus h nu prime plus mc square okay and then square both sides then there is only square root on the right side when you square it we have pc whole square plus mc square the whole square let us expand the left hand side mm, so what you get this is a plus b plus c whole square then what you get is a square plus b square plus c square then 2ab 2ac 2bc okay uh, then this into this there, there is a minus sign here so we have minus 2 h nu h nu prime this into this both are positive h nu is positive mc square is positive so 2 h nu mc square then this into this, okay. Um, there is a minus sign again, so minus two h nu prime m c square. 
okay this is on the left side on the right side we have pc square plus mc square the whole square there is an mc square here okay mc square this mc square the whole square will cancel on both sides okay instead of pc square okay we can substitute from equation 3 let us substitute from equation 3 so this term here becomes from equation 3 h nu square minus 2 h nu h nu prime Two h nu h nu prime cos pi plus h nu prime square. Okay, then uh, h nu square will cancel on both sides. H nu prime square will cancel on both sides. Okay, um, let us try to simplify now. Uh, let me write to the remaining terms. So we have minus minus two h nu h nu prime plus uh, in these two terms I will take uh, two m c square outside. Okay. So we have plus two m c square into h nu minus h nu prime h nu minus h nu prime. And on the right side we have minus 2 h nu h nu prime cos phi. Okay. So there is a uh, you can there is 2 everywhere, 2 you can cancel. There is an h nu into h nu prime here, there is an h nu h nu prime cos phi here. So I will bring this h nu h nu prime to the right side. Okay. And uh, this h nu h nu prime is common here. I can take it outside. So we have uh, two m c square. Uh, two is already gone. Okay. So we have m c square into h nu minus h nu prime is equal to uh, this h nu h nu prime is taken to the right side, so it becomes positive, and it is taken outside. So h nu h nu prime. There is also h nu h nu prime here. So we have 1 minus cos phi. Okay. Again, we can note that, um, yeah, uh, what we do is we can note that uh, 1 x also you can cancel. Uh, 1 x is common here. You can take it outside. It can be cancelled here. And uh, I will bring this new new prime to the left side. There is only 1 x remaining on the right side mc square I will bring to the right side. So what you get is nu minus nu prime divided by nu nu prime. Okay, h I have taken outside and cancelled with the one h on the right side. So we have nu minus nu prime here. We have nu into nu prime here. I have taken it here. There is only one h remaining on the right side. mc square I have taken to the right side. So we have this expression. Now here, uh, if I divide both terms with uh, nu nu prime, nu by nu nu prime, nu will cancel, so we have 1 by nu prime. Here nu prime will cancel, so we have 1 by nu is equal to h by mc square into 1 minus cos phi. I can convert the left hand side into wavelength. Okay, if there is a c here, we know that c by nu prime I can write as lambda prime, c by nu I can write as lambda. So I can take a uh, bring a c here from the right side. So in this from this mc square, let us take one c here. So we have c by nu prime minus c by nu is equal to h by mc. One c has gone to the left side into one minus cos phi. So this c by nu prime is lambda prime c by nu is lambda h by mc into 1 minus cos phi. This is the final expression 
for the wavelength shift in Compton scattering. What is lambda prime? It is the wavelength of the scattered photon. Lambda is the wavelength of the incident photon. So lambda prime minus lambda is delta lambda, the change in wavelength. Is equal to h by mc, h Planck's constant, m is the rest mass of the electron, c is speed of light in vacuum, into 1 minus cos phi. What is phi? Phi is the scattering angle for the photon, angle between the scattered photon and the incident direction. It, it shows that h by mc is a constant. So this shows that the, the, the change in wavelength or the wavelength shift depends only on the scattering angle. Okay, this was the um, this derivation was done by Compton. So Compton experimentally uh, discovered the, the scattering, Compton scattering, and also he theoretically derived this, uh, this expression. One thing that we can uh, no notice in this derivation is that we have used both conservation of momentum as well as conservation of energy to arrive at this expression. And when we use conservation of momentum, we have treated, we have used the the photon momentum also. Okay, so this uh, result, uh, this is compared with the experimental data, and it is, it is found that this wavelength shift that we can measure from the uh, experiment exactly matches with this theoretically calculated wavelength shift. Okay, this shows that um, our uh, use of photon momentum and photon energy in this derivation are valid. In other words, photon is, uh, a, is behaving like a particle with a specific momentum in addition to energy. Okay, the, the, the additional uh, information that we can get from Compton effect, Compton scattering, uh, other than that in photoelectric effect is that in photoelectric effect we used only conservation of energy. A photon has an energy H nu, it is used for um, used as work function plus uh, kinetic energy of the uh, photoelectron, right? There we used only conservation of energy. Whereas in Compton scattering, we used conservation of energy, we treated the energy of the photon H nu as well as the momentum of the photon H nu by C. Okay, so both ideas are used in, the, in this derivation and uh, the 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 result, the observation that uh, this, theor this theoretical value exactly matches with the experimental result validates our derivation. So this was uh, the expression for the wavelength shift in Compton scattering. So we have seen the derivation of uh, wavelength shift. The value we obtain is um, lambda prime minus lambda equals h by mc 1 minus cos phi where m is the uh, rust mass of uh, electron and uh, as we know this uh, derivation was made by uh, Compton himself. Now let us uh, look at this value for phi equal to 90 degree the wavelength shift is called Compton wavelength lambda c okay phi equal to 90 degree means cos 90 is 0 so what is lambda prime minus lambda h by mc Okay, this uh, value is called Compton wavelength lambda c. Now, if you numerically calculate this value, we get 2.426 picometer. Okay, we, maybe we can do this calculation easier if you multiply numerator and denominator with a c. So that we get hc by mc square. hc is uh, 1240. Uh, we can use MeV femtometer in this case. mc square is the rest energy of electron which is 0.511 MeV. So MeV will cancel. If you do this calculation, you will get this. You can check that. So, Compton wavelength is 2.426 picometer. Now, for phi equal to 180 degree, C cos 180 degree is minus 1. So, we get 1 minus minus 1, 1 plus 1, 2. We get 2 times H by MC or 2 times uh, Compton wavelength. This is the maximum wavelength shift available for any initial wavelength. Okay, we have not specified what is the initial wavelength is. Okay, Compton used a particular uh, X-ray, but uh, here in this calculation, lambda can be anything. We are looking at only change in wavelength. What is the maximum possible value of wavelength shift? It is 2 times when phi equal to 180 degree. So what, what is this phi equal to 180 degree? Uh, a photon is coming. Okay, uh, okay, an electron is here, X-ray photon or whatever, photon is coming. And uh, 180 degree scattering means it is just... Uh, um, back scattered okay scattered just backward 
Um, so this photon will be having maximum scattering and hence maximum wavelength shift naturally. And its value is two times uh, this one, um, Compton wavelength shift and it's uh, 4.852 picometer. Double this value, 4.852 picometer. Now this also uh, implies another situation. Whatever be the incident uh, radiation that we use, whether it is um, visible light, infrared, visible light, UV, okay, or X-ray or gamma ray, whatever we use as the incident wavelength, the maximum possible wavelength sh shift is in terms of um, picometer. Uh, 4.852 means roughly 5 picometer. 5 picometer, that is the maximum. Uh, so that means this Compton scattering is significant only if the incident wavelength lambda is comparable to this wavelength shift. Otherwise, we cannot detect it. For example, if you are in visible region, its uh, wavelength is typically 10 raised to minus 7 meter, right? Whereas here the wavelength shift is in picometer, 5 picometer, that is 5 into 10 raised to minus 12. Let us take 10 raised to minus 12. So if the initial wavelength we consider, for example, yeah, green light in, in the visible region, green light is uh, around 500 nanometer, which is 5 into 10 raised to minus 7. Um, so this maximum wavelength shift is, um, what is that, uh, 10 raised to minus um, 5, uh, yeah, approximately 5 into 5 picometer, 5 into 10 raised to minus 12. So what is the fractional change in wavelength, delta lambda by lambda? Delta lambda is 5 into 10 raised to minus 12. Roughly we can say, take that. Lambda is 500 nanometer. That is 5 into 10 raised to minus 7. That is what do we get is 10 raised to minus 5. So the fractional change in wavelength for a green light in, in undergoing Compton scattering is 10 raised to minus 5. Which is very very small. Negligibly small. So visible light when it undergoes Compton scattering we cannot detect. Uh, um, it's a very very significant amount of uh, change in wavelength is there. Fractional changes itself is 10 raised to minus 5. Um, so the percentage is very small. Whereas when we consider uh, an X-ray photon, an X-ray photon has a typical uh, wavelength of 1 angstrom. For uh, the purpose of easy calculation, let us take 5 angstrom. So 5 into 10 raised to minus 10. Now when it undergoes Compton scattering, maximum change can be 5 picometer. Right? Instead of 4.8, I am taking 5. So, what is the fractional change here? 5 into 10 raised to minus 12 delta lambda divided by lambda, which is 5 angstrom. Okay, I am taking a representative value. So, 5 into 10 raised to minus 10, which is 10 raised to minus 2. Okay, it, it is a, a, a significant value. The fractional change is 1 by 100, 10 raised to minus 2. Whereas, in the case of visible light, it is 1 by 1000th of the fractional change in the case of an X-ray. 10 raised to minus 5. So, uh, th this is why Compton scattering is not readily observable in the case of uh, infrared or visible light or even ultraviolet. It is significant in the case of X-rays and also gamma rays. Okay, so only X-rays and gamma rays. In the case of X-rays and gamma rays, Compton scattering is a predominant or is a, is a dominant phenomenon. Okay, in, in the case of uh, visible light uh, or UV or infrared etc., even though it may undergo, it, it undergoes Compton scattering, but uh, the effect is negligibly small in comparison with the original wavelength. Okay. <clears throat> now, um, let us look at this graph. Uh, suppose we plot lambda prime along the y axis and 1 minus cos phi along the x axis. Okay, to check this um, uh, formula, right? Um, this uh, this uh, graph actually is obtained, uh, we can draw this by taking the data from the previous graph obtained in Compton's original experiment. Okay, you remember that uh, for uh, at least three different angles, for um, zero degree there is no change, lambda prime is same as lambda. Um, so, okay, here so for zero degree, no, it, it's, uh, it's not five plotted here, one minus cos phi, okay. Let's say for zero degree we have a uh, lambda prime is zero. For 45 degree we have a lambda prime, for uh, um, um, the next was 90 degree, 135 degree. So for each angle, we can calculate 1 minus cos phi uh, and we can plot lambda prime here. Okay, so you can try to plot the sa same graph here. Um, the graph obtained is a straight line. When you plot the, take the value, this you can do as a homework. You take the lambda prime value from the previous graph 
uh, take the phi value, calculate 1 minus cos phi, plot this. We get a straight line and uh, there is a y-intercept here um, corresponding to 1 minus cos phi equal to 0. Okay, uh, 1 minus cos phi 0 means it must be phi equal to 0. Phi equal to 0, cos 0 is 1, 1 minus 1 is 0. So this is the um, phi equal to 0 means lambda prime is equal to lambda. Okay, the, the, there is a, la, this value, uh, the, it, it, that means uh, at that time you remember the previous graph, there is no second peak. That is phi equal to 0 means the incident radiation is uh, passing straight through the graphite block without any, without any scattering. So that uh, scattered radiation must be the same as the initial uh, radiation. Uh, yeah, what, what was the value that uh, Compton was using? 0 0.0708 nanometer which is uh, here it is plotted in picometer 10 raised to minus 12 meter so it is um, 0 0.07 nanometer means 70 picometer you have to take three decimals to the right so 70 picometer okay it's a uh, 70.08 near near to uh, near to 7 71 picometer <coughs> okay um yeah 0 0.0708 yeah 70.8 I think, so not 70.08, 70.8, so 70.8 is near to 71. So this is the original data from Compton's experiment. You can uh, recreate this graph using the uh, different uh, lambda prime values corresponding to phi equal to 90, uh, 45, 90 and uh, um, <clears throat> for example 90 means uh, for cos 90 means 1 minus cos phi is 1. So the value is this much, uh, 73 point something picometer. So like that you can do. Let us uh, see, compare this experimental graph with the theoretical graph. Okay, look at this. Um, lambda prime, you can rewrite this in terms of lambda prime. Lambda prime is equal to lambda plus h by mc into 1 minus cos phi. This is in the form of a straight line equation. Y, uh, if lambda prime is plotted along the y axis and 1 minus cos phi along the x axis, that equation will be like y equal to mx plus c. x is 1 minus cos phi, so m, this quantity is the slope. The slope will be h by mc whose value is 2.426 picometer. So the slope of this experimental graph is 2.4 picometer. Very close to this uh, theoretically obtained value. Right? And uh, y intercept will be lambda. The, what we have obtained here. Corresponding to phi equal to 0. Okay. So this experimental graph uh, clearly shows that uh, <clears throat> the, this theoretically derived uh, expression is correct. Okay, it is validated. Um, if we use another uh, incident radiation, the y-intercept will be different, lambda will be different, but uh, the, the slope will be the same. Okay, Compton repeated his experiment with gamma radiations also and he got the same type of straight line graph validating his equation. So, uh, Compton's achievement is remarkable. Uh, it was remarkable in the sense that he experimentally measured this uh, detected or uh, detected this uh, phenomenon discovered this phenomenon and also he provided theoretical explanation so there was it was an experimental work as well as a theoretical work compton scattering as we have seen provided the first experimental evidence for the momentum of photon even though einstein had earlier proposed that uh, in 1909 proposed that photon has momentum the first experimental evidence for photons momentum came in 1923 in, in the form of Compton scattering. And what is the expression for the momentum of the photon? H nu by C or in terms of lambda H by lambda. Okay, after this discovery, the quantum nature of radiation was widely accepted. We, we have seen that uh, when Einstein first proposed uh, the, the quantum theory of radiation, that uh, electromagnetic radiation is like a beam of energy quanta or photons, that was in 1905 uh, in his explanation of photoelectric effect. But then no one accepted, uh, no physicist, uh, major physicist accepted Einstein's explanation. Because um, the idea that electromagnetic radiation or light is an electromagnetic wave that was uh, widely uh, accepted at that time. Maxwell's theory was widely accepted at that time. So there was a very a high resistance. Um, um, towards Einstein's, against Einstein's, Einstein's idea. And uh, even Max Planck did not, we have seen that even Max Planck did not uh, accept it. 
and uh, an experimental physicist like uh, Robert Millikan tried to disprove Einstein. And uh, when Millikan's uh, results came in 1915, then his results were in agreement with Einstein's equation of photoelectric effect. But even then, even in the same paper that Millikan announced his experimental data, he uh, voiced doubts whether Einstein's theory was correct or not. Okay, he, he, he was suspicious about even though the experimental evidence was before him. He was suspicious of Einstein's theory. So even after Millikan's uh, experimental evidence in 1915, there was uh, quite a um, reluctance to accept this quantum idea of electromagnetic radiation. But when Compton, uh, Compton's experimental discovery as well as theoretical analysis came in 1923, then immediately everybody saw that uh, this photon has a, a particle nature, it has momentum. Okay, it has energy. So this idea of quantum nature of radiation was widely accepted only after Compton's uh, discovery. So this is the historical uh, significance of Compton scattering. And uh, 1927 Physics Nobel Prize was awarded to Compton just uh, even just four years after his uh, discovery. Remember that Einstein got his Nobel Prize in 1921, 16 years after his uh, explanation of uh, photoelectric effect for which he was awarded the Nobel Prize. So there is, a, there is there was a 16 year gap between the discovery, uh, the explain his idea of photon and uh, the Nobel Prize. Whereas in the case of Compton, the gap was only four years. So that indicated uh, the change in the <coughs> atmosphere uh, in, in the physics community in accepting this quantum theory of radiation. Okay, <coughs> that concludes our discussion on Compton scattering. In the next class, we will discuss um, pair production and pair annihilation. Thank you.